Hello and welcome to News Click. The security of Aadhaar is once again in question. After the Tribune story that said that any data can be bought for 500 rupees. To discuss the same, we are joined by Bapa Sina, who is from Free Software Movement of India. Welcome to News Click, Bapa. What does this story signify? See, the Tribune story is not the first story, and it's not going to be the last story about security leaks by Aadhaar in, in in the Aadhaar system, right? Um, there have been many such reports before. Um, last May, there was a report by CIS, uh, the Center for Internet and Studies, which had said that there were some 13 or 14 crores of um, Aadhaar uh, information was leaked from four government websites. And along with that, some um, 10, 100 million, which is I think 10, 10 crores of uh, bank information of those individuals were leaked, right? But the Tribune story is significant that um, See, we, we all know that the Aadhaar is like porous, it's leaking data, right? But even in our worst imagination, we hadn't imagined that you could pay somebody on WhatsApp 500 rupees and get access to a database of a billion people, right? You can literally enter any Aadhaar number and download his personal information. If I'm right, you also wrote a story for NewsClick a few days back, which pointed out that how the ration shops that are running these Aadhaar centers, from there also the data is leaking, right? I had done this about uh, two months back and, and um, what a very quick search on the internet, right? If you go to Twitter and search for Aadhaar leaks, uh, you, I had come across a, a few tweets and from those tweets, I managed, like literally in spending 30 minutes, I managed to download uh, or rather get access to 10,000 Aadhaar information from what are called e kendras e kendras are these like these these corner shops these um, minor websites which are um, giving aadhaar related services which the government encourages right the government encourages them as enrollment centers and centers where, where you go and do your uh, whatever aadhaar verification and these guys have no idea about security or no conception of security right and and they were just putting out um, people's information along with bank information out in the open, right? And um, uh, and it's just, just uh, the shocking that our, the, 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 the entire country's information is being kept, put in the public for various actors with malicious motives to act on them, right? So so you can talk about scam scammers, about phishing um, gangs, uh, about, it's also a national security threat, right? So, so people from uh, abroad, can get intimate information about every citizen and, 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 the, and the government seems to be callous about that. But how is this data leaking? I mean, how is it reaching to the people, these people who are selling it for 500 rupees on WhatsApp? How Aadhaar is envisioned is that um, the Aadhaar information is kept in a central database. Now, the government claims that that database is secure and that has the Aadhaar number, the personal information, like your personal information and your biometrics, right? And uh, the only uh, access to the database is through what are called ASAs, uh, authentication service agencies. And there are, last I know there were 26 of these. These are large entities, right? So they can be government entities, they can be private entities, they can even be multinational entities, right? MasterCard is in that list. So these 26 entities have access to the central database through lease lines. And, and the government says this is secure. And let's, let's, Take the government's word on that, that the central, the, the CIDR, the central database is secure, okay? Uh, and, and access to the central database is restricted to 26 entities through lease lines. So let's say, let's buy the government's argument that that cannot be hacked. Uh, but then these 26 entities uh, are kind of the, in, in, uh, are the primary brokers of this information, right? Then there are what are called AUAs, auth um, authentication user, user agencies, and there are I think roughly 250 of these, who um, who talk to the AUAs to access the, the same information, right? And, and then these 256 AUAs um, have sub-AUAs, and the sub-AUAs uh, then uh, can be accessed through all your Kinara stores, e-Kendras, any point of sale terminal, your, if you go to a bank, they will ask you for Aadhaar card. So they are effectively taking your Aadhaar information. So when you, when you, let's say you go to a carrier, right? Airtel or Vodafone will, will ask you for Aadhaar authentication. So what they are doing is they are 
uh, at, at when you go to an Airtel store and you give your fingerprint, that is going to a AUA. The AUA is connecting to the ASA, and the ASA talks to the uh, to the central database, and then the the authentication information comes back. Uh, the problem with this architecture is that here you have a, a critical resource which is linked to every activity of your life, right? Effectively, that information, your personal information, right, which is your name, your date of birth, your address, your photo ID, your father's name, it is everything that is needed by a phishing artist to, to create a fink bank account in your name, right? So that information is stored in the other database, and your biometrics is stored in the other database. So, so a critical resource is of a, of the entire like population of this country. Access to that is callously been given to all these entities. And and see, in, in, if you are a security expert, there, there are a few guiding principles in security, right? One is that the in a system, in a security system, the 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 the, the strength of the system is the strength of the weakest link of the thing. But here your weakest link are these e-kendras, right? Who who are who have no knowledge about security, and so and and um, and you would think that that such a uh, critical information would only be restricted to uh, certified government agencies, right? Like for example, like uh, uh, U.S. has a social security number, right? Now the social security number is by law only government agencies have the right to. Take your social security number and access whatever database, right? Here, the the forget about the e kendras Even at the the core of the system, the the um, ASAs, there are private companies, right? There, there's Bharti, there is Vodafone, Reliance, Mastercard, a, a multinational company, and um, uh, and forget about the fraud which is going to happen in the e kendras right? And the attacks on the e kendras right? I'm not saying that every e kendra guy is a uh, criminal, right? But the guy doesn't have the competence to deal with the attack on him. You mean the cyber attacks and all? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I'll come to that later. But even at the core of the system, Bharti Airtel is one of the ASAs, and Bharti Airtel was charged with taking your Aadhaar information and opening uh, payment bank accounts in your name and diverting subsidies to those bank accounts. So the fraud is at the core, right? And in, in such a system, the weakest link is from the core to the periphery, right? And, and, and so, so inherently, this is a flawed design. And it is a flawed design for something which is critical, right? Um, uh, so so, so uh, the, another security uh, kind of elementary security um, uh, guideline is that you don't link um, different aspects together, right? For example, you may have many um, accounts in many websites, right? Or you may have many mail accounts different uh, bank accounts. As a general security precaution, you do not have the same password for all your accounts. And the reason for that is if one of your password gets hacked, you don't want everything to get hacked. Now here is a case where you have a number and your, the password is your biometrics, which you can't change, right? And so if your biometrics were to get hacked, then you are done, right? Um, and, and but the system is designed like that, right? Like um, all of us are familiar with credit cards, and it, it's not just in India. World over, when you, you have credit cards, and look at the precautions that a credit card has, right? And a credit card has been around for like decades now, and so so it's a mature field. The, one of the best brains in the world have worked on it. But every credit card has a few precautions, right? The precautions are that it has a pin associated with it, which you can change at any point in time. Right. Uh, the second precaution is that it is every credit card will give you a 24-7 number which you can call and cancel it at any point in time if your card gets compromised. Right. And uh, the third precaution is your credit card has a credit limit, right? So it, you can only withdraw up to the limit, right? So, so your uh, liability is linked to that limit, right? So if your limit is, let's say, 2 lakhs, the maximum fraud that can happen for you is 2 lakhs. But for Aadhaar, if you look at it, you cannot cancel Aadhaar card, Aadhaar number. It's for life. So if your Aadhaar gets compromised, you are done for life. You cannot change the password because your biometrics can't be changed, right? And there is no limit, right? It is, the Aadhaar is linked to your every bank account, supposedly, right? The government is forcing you to do that. It is linked to your phone. 
it is linked to every if you if you now they are saying that to get admitted to school you do need a aadhar card to go to a hospital you need a aadhar card even when you are dying you need a even aadhar. after your death <laughs> you need a aadhar card to for your relatives to get your death certificate and so everything is linked to this one number which cannot be revoked whose pin you can't change it is by design is a security nightmare let's come back to the cyber attack part that you were saying how is that being done one of the interesting things is uh, any time these uh, leaks have been reported and there have been many reports right and, and the tribune report is is the last uh, the, the most recent of them um the government has two responses right one is to say the aadhar database did not get breached by what by that what they are implying is that the biometrics is not breached what they conveniently not telling you is the aadhar database is not just the biometrics it is also the personal information and in every one of these cases the government is not denying that your personal information is leaked right i mean right. that's for everybody to see uh in the biometrics side there was a wikileaks report i think last year or the year before that which said that cia has access to the entire biometrics right? cia actively has a program which tries to get biometrics from different countries covertly and this company which has a relationship with cia the government had contracted this company to get the biometric devices so the government's claim that biometrics has not been hacked that is dubious but but even if you take that claim at face value um look if you go to a uh, uh, what is called a point of sale uh, terminal right so so you go to a, your kinara store you go to a uh, uh, airtel shop a vodafone shop to give your aadhar to give, to give your fingerprints and your aadhar number now what is the what is to say that the scanner the fingerprint scanner or the iris scanner they have that there is not a skimmer right which is which is taking which is making a copy of your biometrics they already have your aadhar number so uh if that guy is a criminal the, your your kinara store is a criminal he can easily take a copy of your biometrics he has your aadhar number and he can impersonate you but even assuming that the, that guy is honest but let's say the 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 laptop or the pc to which the scanner is uh, connected to let's say that has a virus that has a there's a malware right and that malware intercepts the biometrics and and skims it off so they have stolen your biometrics so for the government to claim that that this is somehow like this holy sacred thing which cannot be stolen that, that's just ridiculous also as far as i know i mean the government is also saying that they're working on it and aadhar is essential it's the same bjp which had opposed aadhar when they were in opposition the primary response that they also gave to this entire tribune story uidai filed an fir on the reporter and the newspaper along with the fir's the government if you if you read the news articles carefully the government said that they're encouraging these e kendras to now move into government premises and and some apparently some 4000 have moved in and some 26000 are in the process of moving in how many of them are there and after all these years they are like and encouraging as if, right and as if moving to the government government premises will uh, all of sudden solve the basic problems of security yeah i mean the cia's report says that the government websites were leaking it right but but let's say the government now has learned a lesson and provided this this strong firewall and where where all these people can move in but you have lakhs of them right and and 4000 have moved in and moved in after so many years nandan nilankani who is kind of the kind of the brain kind of, behind the, the... the father of this thing he goes on an interview last year and he says that look aadhar is no more insecure than a than a smartphone right and in a smart you people you are using your smartphone all the time and you are least bothered about your security so aadhar is no more look at the callousness of it and he says that um, in a smartphone you are using it daily aadhar on the other hand is um, is sporadic right so you only go i mean it's a ridiculous argument right you have linked your aadhar to your bank account how is it sporadic i, I mean you, you can make transfers based on your aadhar number right somebody can impersonate you and do money laundering based on aadhar numbers and, and and somehow we are supposed to feel comfortable that oh google and and apple and uh, whoever amazon is stealing your information which you are willingly giving and here the government is forcing you to give that information and this information is by the way linked to the most critical activities of your life and and it's okay it it happens that's that the government's response it's the same government which i think in 2015 went to the supreme court and said that right to privacy cannot be a fundamental right of a citizen 
so what else can you expect from the government which if you look at Aadhaar in total they have been news around this country that people have died because they didn't get ration card people have died because uh, they were hungry and, and their fingerprints didn't match even if you leave these things aside the question still remains that I am sure that the government knows about these problems and if yes then why are they still going ahead with it the one word answer is it doesn't care right why is the government doing it right now um, the what is the, the the official stated purpose is the government is doing it because it uh, saves the government a lot of money and leaks and corruption will all be magically disappear right and uh, and, and different people, right, different government officials, different UADI, the government argued in the Supreme Court, Nandan Nilankani, they, they come up with this figure of, this magical figure of 9 billion or 11 billion, different time, the figure changes, but it's in that $10 billion range. $10 billion have magically been saved by Adhars. That justifies doing all this, right? It turns out that there was a, there was a report on this last year. Um, that number was picked up from a World Bank uh, report, right? A World Bank funded report, a World Bank think tank report, and they um, referred to another article uh, from where they got their numbers. And if you go to the source article, that doesn't say that $10 billion have been saved. That says that the total government transfers to individuals, like for Manrega payments, for, for PDS, for, for various benefits, that amount is estimated to be 10 billion. So the 10 billion is the total transfer. 10 billion is not the savings. savings. Why the government is doing it is for couple of reasons, right? One is it's a wonderful security tool for the government. The government can monitor every aspect. The other aspect is if you, if you listen to what the technical people are saying carefully, they, they use this word that it's about data. And, and they also talk about how data is the new oil. I mean, it's basically that once you have the data and once you have, uh, you're linked, you have linked your Aadhaar with everything, basically the witch hunting becomes very effective on part of the government and any sane voice which is raising voice against the government, against government policies or any such things, yeah. their witch hunting may strengthen day by day. Yeah, there is a surveillance act, uh, aspect to it and then there is also the, the, the commercial aspect to it, right? right? For example, your insurance premiums will be linked to what you are doing and, 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 and there are various ways to make money out of it. Anyway, let's see Supreme Court is going to hear the Aadhaar case again this month and let's see what comes out of it. Uh, by the time, we can only wait and watch what's going to happen. And we'll be coming back to you on such issues again. Thanks a lot, Bappa. Uh, thank you for watching News Click. Keep following our website and our Facebook page.